So my real estate journey has been across various different asset classes of real estate, meaning different types of real estate. And also it's had its ups and downs, some significant downs and some significant ups. And I just wanted to give you all an update of where I am personally. This is day 26 of my 30 day YouTube vlog challenge. And I wasn't really sure what to talk about, but I can tell you where I'm at right now so that y'all can follow along in the journey in case that gives you something to relate to, something to either aspire to or something to just know, hey, somebody else is going through some similar stuff. And sometimes it just helps your mental state, right? So here we go. Without further ado, let me talk about uh, my current biggest real estate deals. So my two biggest personally are, one is my 56 unit apartment complex that I partnered on with my parents that I thought I was going to sell last year and cash out about $1 1.6, $1.7 million. Ended up not doing that. The buyer was actually not able to close on the loan. Uh, crazy story with that. And I'm not going to get into the details because I'm not sure how much of that I'm supposed to divulge. But point is, they weren't able to buy it. So I got to recoup their earnest money, which was close to $40,000 of the earnest money that they put down because their financing fell through. So I got to get all of that and put it towards other investments. Anyways, so that was actually a blessing in disguise because that 56 unit turns out was about $200 per unit under market rent. I was so focused on doing what we're doing here at ADPI, uh, setting up ADPI Capital, and also just focused on what I thought the best move for that property was, which was to sell it, that I didn't realize that post COVID in that area, just outside of Indianapolis, that the rents had just skyrocketed, especially for affordable housing. So my rents at the time, when I realized this, you know, about half a year ago, we're averaging seven, 750, like about 700, $750. Um, but now they're easily renting out at 900, 950. So, and that's without doing some of the improvements I'm about to start doing. So I'm really excited about that. I'm really, it was like such a blessing that I didn't sell that property. Additionally, I'm seeing what everybody's going through in the current commercial market and how everybody who had floating rates or bridge loans, and that's all just techno babble for loans that are about to come due, like they're going to have to pay it back. And the interest rates on them were floating, meaning, so it wasn't fixed, meaning the monthly payment that they had to make on that loan started going up and down and up, 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 up over all these rate hikes. So what I, I'm realizing, I still have over four years of fixed rate, awesome debt on this property. And it's basically under leveraged now, uh, which gives me a lot of cash flow and it gives me a lot of a, just flexibility with this one single property. So what I can accomplish now is I can raise those rents. I can refinance it if I need to, but I don't, but I'm not going to do that unless there's a pinch with the other property that I'm going to talk about here in a second. And I'm just going to, I'm just going to hold on to it. And once I raise the rents, it should appreciate probably about a million bucks just like that. So a year of raising rents, doing some improvements that'll be about $100,000, $150,000 total, I might be able to force appreciation a million dollars, maybe even more, because when the improvements are done, I'll probably be able to demand rents closer to $1,000 actually. So that's all pretty amazing and pretty exciting. However, I am going to have to have a plan so that in four years from now, I'm going to have to either sell and 1031 exchange that property so that I don't have to pay taxes. And if you're wondering about what 1031 is, uh, subscribe to our channel and watch some of the previous videos that I've done on not paying taxes. Um, and 1031 is just a great way to do that. But so I'm going to have to either sell, do a 1031 exchange if I want to defer taxes, or I'm going to have to uh, refinance. And the nice thing about refinancing, anything you cash out, that's basically debt. So you don't pay taxes on that either because it's not considered income. So I'm going to have to do that in not the so near future, but also not so distant future. You know, in about four years, I'm going to have to make that decision. But meanwhile, that four years is plenty of time for me to ride through this turmoil that's going on in the commercial real estate market. Um, I did want to comment on that a little bit, though, further as far as commercial real estate. I think that if you are just stepping into commercial real estate right now, right now is a fantastic time because the deals are about to come in. And if you're able to pay prices for properties that make sense with the current interest rates and get fixed rate interest, uh, fixed rate interest on your debt, you're going to be in a good position for when things settle out and the dust settles across the market you're gonna be in a good position to refinance and to own a fantastic property long-term. And it's just, it doesn't get better than that. It doesn't get better than acquiring a property when everybody else is freaking out, <laughs> right? When there's, when there's a stress and turmoil out there in the market, if you can capitalize on it, if you can jump in now 
Don't let this scare you away. Look at this as an opportunity. You could really make some handsome money down the road. Now, um, let's see what no, the second thing, my other biggest property that I'm working on right now, I have a few more, but I, I'm not going to talk about that in this video is our memory care facility. This thing is a beast. This thing took a lot longer than we expected. And I'm, we're still trying to decide whether we're going to end up selling it or refinancing it and growing that portfolio. The initial and kind of still current plan is to grow a portfolio of multiple assisted living facilities because after go learning all these hard lessons, it would be a shame to not capitalize on all these hard lessons and be able to get the next property and reposition it easier every single next one, right? Like once you have that experience level, it would be a shame to not put it to good use because uh, again, where things are more difficult Difficult and more scary to get into, which this is a like, it's a more delicate and, and more involved space than just apartment complexes, for example, uh, where there's more um, uh, stress, right, where there's more uncertainty, there's actually more opportunity as well. So if you have that experience, you can capitalize the on, on the opportunity. So that was the initial plan. We might still do that. We might end up selling. We'll see what happens. But the reason I'm saying that is because we are way behind on schedule. Our contractor that we got early on was terrible. He spent an entire year, which should have taken only three or four months, and he's and it was through an SBA loan. And so we had to take on that extra. It was kind of like a bridge loan, but not really. Through the SBA loan, they let you take on more. They let you draw on extra debt that you have set aside for the renovations, and. Um, and we applied that towards the renovation work. He did a terrible job, didn't didn't finish it, didn't do it, and it took him way too long. And so now we just got approved for another increase on the loan to do more work with some awesome contractors that are way better. And I can't wait to get that done because then we're actually gonna be able to execute the business plan and get better tenants in there um, that that pay on time, that, that are at the uh, mental acuity, that are facility is designed for because not every facility can accommodate every every individual that wants to stay there potentially and then what that'll allow us to do is to have better employees come in like once the once the facility is at a higher level it's better higher renovation level like we increase the class so to speak at that point we're going to be able to uh, attract higher level talent to work there, care even more for the residents, uh, attract uh, better residents that will, uh, whose families will, will appreciate that we care for them. And it's like, it's going to be this awesome relationship, a value relationship, right? And uh, that's what we're going to do down the road. Then what I might end up doing once all this is humming along, right, is I, I might actually start my own property management company. I'm kind of toying with the idea. I know a lot of, um, experienced operators, that's what they do. Uh, but for the longest time, I didn't have the right people to do that with. And now I think I have a few of the right people to where I wouldn't have to manage the day-to-day. -day. I could partner with them. Uh, with And with my experience in capital, I we could really you know, start acquiring more properties to manage and then potentially acquiring them, like owning them as well. Because I think a great way to potentially find the next deal for me will be to uh, kind of dip my toe in as being the manager first, seeing if we actually like the property, seeing if there's any issues with it. And then if we like it, maybe we can put in, you know, maybe we can potentially acquire it. Um, and this could be both single family and apartment complexes because I have the right people now outside of Indianapolis that I trust. And so including a maintenance person, a construction person, and a maintenance, uh, and, a, and a management. Uh, um, so if, if I can, if I can have, an entire team working for me to help me like be my boots on the ground and then have me do what I do best, which is relationship building and acquisitions and capital raising and all that kind of stuff. That really, I think that's how I'll be able to scale my personal portfolio of real estate the fastest. So anyways, that's pretty much it. Sorry about the rapid fire, but I wasn't really sure what to talk about. Wanted to give you guys some value and I decided a quick update would probably be the best. Thanks. I'll talk to you later. Bye.